today on 15 on 15. We have details regarding what the newly implemented beach policy entails. Plus, check out these Mimu gloves that revolutionizes the way musicians perform. And we meet the new general manager of the Hyatt Regency, Aruba. Thank you for joining us. I'm Yanta Liu. A new beach policy has officially been implemented. We announced this last week. Here is what is being enforced. The new beach policy is applicable to the use of the beach in the West Coast District from Tamarin up to and including Ritz-Carlton. The objective is to improve the quality of the beach experience in Aruba. The steering committee wishes to enforce the policy fast. Work on the new license system to beach use has started. In mid-January, stakeholder institutions will be informed on the main themes and planning of the policy implementation process. Consultations with the water sports companies will follow in February. Then in April, the committee hopes to review all beach sections with the tourist resorts. If all goes according to plan, submitting applications license may start in May. The policy stresses that the beaches of Aruba are in the public domain, must be accessible on an equal basis for everyone, resident or visitor to our country, and must remain so. The government stresses that they will not grant any statutory claims or titles on beach use and they want to prevent this to occur. Here are some clarifications regarding water sport operators as well as the rental of shade area and beach chairs on the beach. Along the shore, a strip must remain completely open and freely accessible so that anyone can play and stroll here undisturbed. At deeper beaches, this open strip needs to be wider as well. Regarding water sport operators, the new policy calls for their locations to be dispersed more evenly across the beach in order to foster peace and order, to reduce the number of conflicts and to enhance mutual competitive positions. Rental and reservation of palapas and parasols are not allowed according to this beach policy. Per beach section, one or two licenses may be issued instead to offer in bulk beach chairs on a commercial basis. For the full policy, you can download it on the DIP website www.dip.aw. Let's get into carnival for a minute here. There has been changes for the parades taking place in Orangistad. Listen carefully. The lighting parade in Orangistad is scheduled for the 7th of February and the route is as follows. The fun will start at the Aruba Entertainment Center in Takota, past Banco di Caribe, then Vondelin, all the way up to LG Smith Boulevard and it will finish at Wendy's. This is the same route as last year. However, for Aruba's 61st Grand Carnival Parade, it will start at Wendy's on LG Smith Boulevard and go the opposite direction of the lighting parade. The Grand Carnival Parade will end at the Aruba Entertainment Center in Takota. The dance parade, which is new to the itinerary, is scheduled at the end of this month on the 30th. It will start at the Entertainment Center in Takota, go down past Banco Ticaribe, on the way to LG Smith Boulevard, back to Adrian Leclay Boulevard, past Wilhelmina Strad, and end at the Entertainment Center in Dakota. This is the same route laid out for the Children's Parade in Arangistad, which is on February 1st, 2015. Moving forward, the world's best beach tennis tournament was hosted right here in Aruba back in November. It is normal that a whole new group of fans fell in love with the sport, considering the magnitude of the event. We shouldn't have to wait until November every year in order to follow up on the world of beach tennis. So if you are a fan, there is Beach Mag. Beach Mag was established two years ago by Magali Garnier. She is a professional beach tennis player from the island of Réunion in France. Réunion is known to be a prime spot for the sport. The mission statement of Beach Mag is to promote the sport of beach tennis, its tournaments from all over the world as well as the players. Beach Meg captured every exciting moment during the Aruba International Beach Tennis Tournament at Eagle Beach. They played a vital role in promoting the event and showing the beach tennis community from all over the world 
the show the island is capable to put on for the sport. You may follow Beach Mag on Facebook or YouTube. On that note, we will be right back. Stay with us. Glitter is annoying, so send it to your enemy. An Australian company does just that. Details next. Thanks for staying tuned to 15 on 15 and welcome back from the break. Innovators are changing the way we make music. Introducing the Mimu Gloves. They are created in collaboration with British singer-songwriter Imogene Heap. The Mimu Gloves turns the arms and hands of performers into musical instruments. Check it out. Makers are hoping the Mimu Glove and its software will reach a wide range of users. Mimu works by capturing movement and hand gestures with analog bend sensors. That information is then sent wirelessly via a wireless input-output board. The software developed for Mimu enables performers to map that data to musical control signals and combine different gestures and movements to make more complex controls. The gloves can also be programmed to control third-party music production and editing software. At $1,260 for a kit with the components to make a full glove, Mimu is still fairly expensive. Right now, the glove is at about 90% finished and is entering its final stage of development. Looking for feedback from investors. Currently on Kickstarter, the project has raised well over $100,000. Over on to a new lifestyle topic. For the new moms out there, here is the truth about drinking while breastfeeding. So let's say you're pregnant, you can't drink for nine months, then when the baby pops out, it's certainly cause for celebration and a big toast, don't you think? Well, not so fast. Society has told us that new mothers should not consume alcohol when breastfeeding. In reality though, the effects of drinking while nursing hasn't been heavily studied and it freaks some moms out. That's why you see some women drink while breastfeeding while others don't. But there was suspicion from researchers that the recommendation not to drink was based on a better safe than sorry approach rather than solid data. In the most recent investigation, researchers combed through various studies on alcohol, nursing and infants and concluded that there is no medical reason to discourage nursing mothers from having a drink or two on occasion and there is no reason to be concerned for the welfare of their babies if they do. Any type of alcohol is fine when you drink it in moderation. Since there isn't a ton of research on the effects of drinking while nursing, the safest course is still not to consume alcohol while you're breastfeeding. Researchers say it is best to nurse right before you have a drink. That buys you a little extra time for your body to fully metabolize the alcohol before your baby's next feeding. On to over to enemies. Wouldn't you love to annoy yours? Well, send them an envelope full of glitter. That'll surely annoy them. A new Australian company does just this. Glitter seems to never go away. That is a fact. It is sparkly and great for certain projects, but they are certainly annoying, which is exactly why a new company called Ship Your Enemies Glitter decided that revenge is a dish best served glittery. According to their website, the Australian company will vomit up a ton of glitter and mail it in an envelope to your enemy, complete with a note telling them how awful they are. This service can be provided for you for just a little over $8. It is certainly amazing what people can think of nowadays, but I have to admit, glitter is extremely annoying and it doesn't come off. So the service is kind of a genius. Let's take a quick break. Here's what's coming up next for you. Economic prosperity was discussed during a meeting with the Prime Minister and the new GM of the Hyatt Aruba. The Hyatt Regency in Aruba has welcomed a new general manager. A meeting was held between the GM and the Prime Minister to ensure both parties were on the same page. Joel Bundy, the new general manager of the Hyatt Aruba, together with Fred Hoffman, the former GM of the property, were brought together to meet with Prime Minister Mike Amen. The discussion focused on the economic prosperity of the island as well as its tourism sector. 
It was wonderful. I, it's so wonderful to meet so many people on my first day, um, and especially the Prime Minister. Uh, and we just had a good talk about how great the business climate it is in, in Aruba and how we want to make sure uh, that continues for both Aruba and the Hyatt. It was absolutely wonderful. The Prime Minister did not request for the team leader to put certain items on his list of priorities. What was accomplished was a sense of commitment from the new GM to work not only for the property, but also to the community for Aruba. Nothing in particular, really. What, what we wanted to do was meet each other and make sure that we can continue the great traditions that Hyatt has in supporting the community of Aruba uh, and continuing on all those great traditions uh, long into the future. So that's what I wanted to make sure he has my commitment. Uh, we're going to continue that. The new general manager was informed on the government's strategy in attracting the more affluent visitors. The Hyatt's new GM is ready to work with Aruba to attract quality tourists. We want to make sure that that continues so that the economy of Aruba is vibrant uh, and, and continues just that way. And the people that come here want to spend money not only at the Hyatt, but in all the other restaurants, uh, bars, casinos. Uh, so it's really important that the entire island uh, benefit from every consumer that comes here. That is all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back here with fresh topics for the next edition of 15 on 15. Remember, we are on weeknights starting at 7.15 p.m. right before Noticia Awanochi. We'll see you then.